Hello everyone, my name is Cameron and I have been a loyal subscriber of Predimonja's coffee subscription for the last four months. As someone who works and lives in Midtown Manhattan, as well as has a slight coffee addiction, I had no choice but to buy the subscription. And I can confidently say it's been a very significant improvement to my life. If you're not aware, Pret Lamange, or more commonly known as Pret, is a London-based coffee retailer that has over 400 stores in the UK and is growing their footprint in the US with nearly 60 stores, most of them being right here on the East Coast. Seeing the addiction and value placed on subscriptions by Gen Z and other consumer groups, Pret began offering their coffee subscription in 2020 to combat slumping revenues compared to their pre-pandemic prestige. The premium subscription costs $40 a month, and it allows users to get up to five coffees, teas, lemonades, or any drink of their choice a day. You can either afford it in the store or order ahead on onto the pretty solid mobile app. The only caveat is that you need to wait 30 minutes between each order. And it's this rule that inspired me to create this video. As a self-proclaimed good boyfriend and coworker, I enjoy being able to treat others with my coffees. It also would be quite a struggle for myself alone to down five drinks in a day. But in these generous acts of kindness, I have found myself often ordering a coffee and then waiting the agonizing 30 minutes to place my second order for my coffee companion for the day. This works great when I can plan it ahead as the app does allow users to schedule the pickup time, but it's frustrating when it's more of a heat of the moment coffee decision where I typically don't have the time to wait 30 minutes for that second redeemable coffee. Similar to other challenges I face in my daily life, I do not think that I am alone in this frustration. Fortunately, I think that this has created a golden opportunity for Pret to capitalize on the general consumer's impatience and need for everything to be accessible instantly. I think that Pret could generate a significant increase in revenue if they implemented just one small change to their coffee subscription. And in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down what that idea is, as well as an analysis of the numbers that led me to draw this conclusion. And with that said, Let's get into it. As alluded to, I think that Pred needs to take advantage of their subscribers' impatience regarding the 30-minute wait period for redeeming their five copies a day. My suggestion to Pred is to charge their users a small fee that allows them to bypass this 30-minute period. In order for this fee to make sense to the user, the rate would have to be less than an average cost of coffee. For the purpose of this analysis, I have based my revenue assumptions on both a $1 and a $2 fee, although realistically in New York City, anything under $7 for a large oat milk ice latte would definitely be considered a bargain. So that's it. That's the grand idea. But trust me, while it may seem small, just like Muggsy Bogues, this can have a major impact on the financial results of pret Now, let me show you why. All right, so before going any further, I need to lay out all the numbers that I had to work with for this analysis, a big shout out is in order for bakeryinfo.uk as they had the most comprehensive numbers around Pret's subscription business. Pret is privately owned, so there isn't a ton of data around their business. In the article, they've reported that the Pret subscription is used 1.25 million times a week, and that's just in the UK. They also noted that the average subscriber redeems their subscription 28 times a month. Because there isn't any public data disclosing the official number of subscribers, I was able to use some high-level site and grade math to calculate that this means that there are around 180,000 subscribers in the UK alone. This was calculated by taking that 1.25 million uses a week number and multiplying it by four to find a rough monthly estimate, and then dividing that by the 28 transactions for the average subscriber. This puts Pret's monthly recurring revenue from their subscription at $7.2 million. This was found by multiplying that 180,000 subscribers by the $40 subscription fee. Adjusted yearly, their annual revenue from their subscription alone brings in over $86 million. That's pretty fantastic and is a number that would have easily gotten the company a multi-billion dollar valuation if it were selling software instead of sweet coffees. But surprisingly, this $86 million in revenue makes up just a fraction of their total annual revenue. Pred brought in $988 million in revenue in 2022, which puts their annual subscription revenue at just around 9% of the total pie. But it doesn't have to be this way. So as I said before, my grand yet 
Simple Plan is for Pred to offer their subscribers the ability to pay a small fee to bypass their 30 minute wait period for redeeming the subscription. This means that if I walk to Pred and order a coffee now, I can pay a few dollars to then get another coffee instantly instead of having to wait 30 minutes. The most challenging estimates I had to make were how often subscribers would actually do this. I think I spent maybe half an hour debating with my brother in a London coffee shop, which surprisingly wasn't a pred, about the different feasibilities of percentages. This is obviously an important number as it dictates the total monthly uses of the payment feature, which can make millions of dollars of difference in my revenue estimate. We concluded that it made the most sense to have four different percentage points to show varying ranges of revenue. These percentages symbolize how often a subscriber will pay to bypass the wait period. I chose 5% of the time, so one out of every 20 uses, 10% of the time, so one in 10, 20%, which is also one out of every five, and finally 40%, which is two out of every five orders. These numbers seem simple, but get far more complex when you factor in the fact that the first coffee of the day will never be generating a fee. And while subscribers average 28 transactions a month, are these consolidated during the week when they are at work and therefore it averages out to higher than one a day per day of use? Or are these 28 transactions spread evenly throughout the month and then average less than one use a day per month? As you can see, there's certain levels you can go with this, but I'm choosing to stay at the surface level for the purposes of this video. But I should say, if Pret wants to bring me on as a consultant, I am happy to dive much deeper. Okay, so now that we have outlined all of the baseline numbers, let's do some more math to determine the money Pret can make from this idea. Don't worry, unless you're currently in second grade, this math should be pretty easy. And if you are in second grade, go tell your parents to set up a 529 account for you. Trust me. So from the use percentage estimates we just discussed, we can now find the total number of subscription redemptions for each month. These go from 250,000 to 500K, 1 million, all the way up to 2 million uses a month for that 40% use case. This number was found by multiplying the respective use percentage by the 5 million monthly uses. Now you can see the revenue that this generates per month for Pret at both the $1 per use rate and $2 rate. The low end of the spectrum is 250 thousand dollars and the high end of the range is four million dollars a month naturally as a finance bro i was featured on midtown uniform after all i'm always in search of pumping the numbers up so it's only right to turn this monthly revenue into the yearly revenue now the low end of the additional revenue estimate is three million dollars and the high end is now 48 million dollars please let me remind you that they currently bring in around 86 million total from the subscription annually so while the 48 million is a massive 55% revenue growth in subscription revenue, even the measly $3 million is a growth of about 3.5%, which would make plenty of other subscription-based models very jealous. These are absolutely huge potential gains for a company that just reported its first annual profit in five years this last June. Prior to this year, their last profitable year was in 2018, but even then they only generated profits of about $25 million. That's why I feel so strongly that my plan can absolutely boost profits. Think about the margins. Pret already has the tech infrastructure in place. They have a very successful mobile app already built that has payment functionality. Plus, the app is already used by the hundreds of thousands of subscribers. All they need to do is roll out a simple feature that allows users to pay the bypass fee. Also, this plan does not change any commitments that they have already made. Pret already committed to their customers that they can get up to five copies a day. So it's not like my suggestion changes that. Yes, perhaps if one can bypass the wait period, they may get more coffees, thus using more of their coffee supply and increasing operating expenses, but this would be a marginal rise in costs and would be super irrelevant compared to the boost in revenue from these orders. This is another section where I realize we can go very deep into profit and expense calculations, so to spare you, I will end that conversation now. To wrap this up, Pret had total annual revenue last year of $988 million. This is great, but my plan can grow this number by 0.3% on the conservative side and 2.4% on the liberal. Let me remind you, Pret is a coffee shop, not a tech company. A subscription model is not supposed to be a core part of its business, but it is. Apple never started off planning on selling headphones, but now their AirPods business is estimated at $240 billion. Netflix started with a business model centered around mail-to-order DVDs. Business environments change, and what allows these businesses to succeed does as well. 
You may be asking, what's the point of me making this video? And honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I just one day had a cool idea and wanted to see it through to the end. Pred is actually owned by an investment firm that owns some other large brands like Keurig, Dr. Pepper, Panera, and one of my personal favorites, Krispy Kreme. Pred was acquired in 2018 in a deal worth around $1.9 billion. Because of this private ownership, I know Pred is capable of being dynamic and is looking to juice profits quickly. In 2021, Pred reported that they targeted to double the size of their business in just five years. And I think this is a great way to start. Pred has already had massive success in being one of the first food retailers to offer a subscription model. So why not continue to innovate? Trust me, I'm going to do my best to get this idea into the hands of Pred and the private equity owner, even if it means I have to go to their office, which is conveniently located just down the street from me on the 18th floor of the Empire State Building. And with that, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this type of content, let me know down below in the comments if I should make more videos like this. Also, please tell me if I'm being absolutely delusional and you think my idea would never work. As always, feel free to reach out on Instagram or LinkedIn if you have any questions. And also, check out the Pret Cobb description. As you can tell, I am a fan. Which reminds me, Pret really should have an affiliate program for this, but maybe that's a video for another time. Peace.